The images projected around me are being shown in the Whitechapel Art Gallery uh, in East London. All of them are the work of a single artist, the Scottish-born David Batchelor. Batchelor's title, Found Monochromes, speaks to the central thing that all of these works have in common. Whether they're horizontal or vertical, all of these photographs center on a blank white pane uh, or panel, uh, which he's come across somewhere in some fairly nondescript, oftentimes quite generic, urban context. One of these things which these works exemplify is his interest in color in modern urban life. The found monochromes are the registry or the um, residue of a project that Batchelor took as he traveled really all around the world. He took his camera with him and would use it to focus on a certain kind of image or anti-image, a blank white rectangle, uh, which he found in all kinds of unexpected contexts. For example, uh, a piece of white paper, blank, uh, taped to the window of a car, or a blank white board propped up inside a curbside kiosk, or a white um, signboard, uh, which seems to be outside a parking garage. All of these works have exactly the same criteria. They're found in the city, um, they're empty, and as we see them, we're forced to decide whether we think um, they're waiting for some image or message, or whether the image or message they once bore has been blanked out. Batchelor has observed a few other rules in addition uh, to finding a white geometric form. He has to find them in cities. That's key to his enterprise. He has to find them in the urban world. He began to travel more widely and has shot in Europe. He's shot in South America. He's shot in America. So that in the end, when we look at a list of places and dates, we see cities like Philadelphia and Buffalo, as well as more uh, local uh, context for his work. And then finally, he seems always to be looking for a certain uh, picture within a picture effect. There's the picture itself, the context, and then there is the rectangle, which is framed uh, like an abstract painting uh, within that world. In The Found Monochromes, David Batchelor is speaking back to a number of dearly held assumptions about abstraction. For example, that it's divorced from everyday life, that it's spiritual, that it's navel-gazing, that it's abstruse. Batchelor doesn't believe any of this. On the contrary, he sets about trying to demonstrate the relatedness of abstraction to the very fabric of everyday life. That's what the found monochromes do. He says, look around you. Look at the buildings uh, which we live in. Look at the bricks which made them or the girders that hold them up. The right angle prevails. Or look, for example, at the panels of color uh, with which we um, make our billboards or which face our interior walls. Or look at a cinema screen. Uh, and you will see, indeed, that in this context, we find ourselves in an abstract world. How are we going to consider the sort of abstraction of the ruling idea. The fact of the matter is, Bachelor seems to have been looking for some sort of a program or a concept, a concept that would lead to him discovering in the monochromes a piece of conceptual art. So, what happens to the urban environment under such an abstract system? 
The work ends up going back to its initial concreteness, I think. It goes back to it in the kind of confrontation that it stages, this time for the viewer, not for uh, Bachelor anymore, but for the viewer with real conditions and real experiences that relate so strongly to what we ourselves might see in the urban world. What do its blanks and gaps show us? What happens to our minds as we make our way around the world? If we look back at the history of sociology, we see a clear focus starting from the early 1950s onwards uh, on the nature of urban life. This may have something to do uh, with a specific attitude in Europe in the post-war period when cities were being uh, constructed, reconstructed, revisioned in uh, entirely new ways. It was particularly in France uh, that these questions came up in the work of one particular sociologist, Paul Chambard de Lau. Uh, the result was a map which tracked the movements of one urban citizen, a Parisian teenager uh, whose life took her from university uh, to her grandmother's house to her music lesson. Sociologists mapped these movements and the result was a noticeably consistent story of how one person experiences the world. If we imagine that bachelors found uh, monochromes make something like a set of maps of the urban world, then the door is open to think about how it relates to other uh, post-war mappings of city life. Probably the most vivid of all of these, and one which Bachelor certainly knew, is a map by a young Frenchman, Guy Debord. What he did was to take a well-known and very beautiful map of Paris, which was made in 1956. It's a bird's eye map of that city, uh, um, with its uh, walls visible, and one which was printed exquisitely. De Boer takes this map and he cuts it up and stitches it back together, uh, not in a literal fashion, but linking it up now as a crazy jigsaw of pieces whose only ties are red arrows uh, which uh, vector and move uh, through uh, a city which is now in fragments. De Boer called this map a psychogeographical map with the idea that it would be a guide to a different kind of experience of the city. Not a literal experience of geography, a going from place to place, but rather a map that would respond to moods, to changes of mind, to a way of living differently, of allowing uh, discovery, a thinking anew about what life could be like. Bachelors found monochromes I think reflect something of the same spirit as does uh, De Boer's approach to the city. We might even imagine, just for the fun of it, that Bachelor's monochromes make a kind of psychogeographical map. Certainly there is no rational uh, linkage among the pictures that he takes other than the format he imposes upon them. We as viewers of his partial maps of the places he sees are uh, inspired or provoked to think about ourselves in relationship to the abstraction, the blankness, and uh, the variety and unvariety that is city life. Bachelor uses this work as the catalyst for a different kind of experience of the urban surrounding and urban fabric. Say we were to focus on any one of these spaces. Say we're, we were to imagine them as uh, providing a window onto some other kind of experience within the world. 
would we see a better place? Would we see a more expansive experience? Would we see possibilities that we're only beginning to imagine? Possibilities, I mean, of course, in ways to live. Or, and the opposite is equally possible, is there nothing to see, really? Is it a kind of dead-end experience, a dead-end which we are a force to encounter standing before these works. We all know that modern life seems to offer both. We're not always sure uh, whether it offers uh, such experiences, such double possibilities to all people equally.